Hi folks and thanks for watching my video. Uh, we're currently looking at the Project Airbus uh, A321-231 series. Uh, this one equipped with the IAE V2533 engines. And uh, we're currently parked at the uh, tarmac at uh, Frankfurt, Maine International Airport. We're going to be departing uh, this airport en route to uh, Tel Aviv in Israel. Ben Gurion International to be exact. I've loaded the aircraft with 35,000 pounds of fuel, which is the uh, estimated amount of fuel required for the trip as per uh, fuelfinder.com. And uh, I've rewritten the flight dynamics for this aircraft, I've corrected the uh, empty weight, maximum takeoff weight, uh, maximum fuel capacity, range pack zone so that uh, when you fill the aircraft with a full load of fuel, it exactly matches maximum takeoff weight. I've adjusted the thrust of the engines to public specifications and uh, adjusted the fuel scaler so the aircraft will remain stationary with the engines at idle. I've also uh, made changes to the autopilot vertical speed setting. It defaults to zero now instead of 1800 feet per minute. Makes for a little bit easier transition from one altitude to another. That being said, we're going to hop in the cockpit here and have a look around and then we'll get uh, our flight on the go. Okay, so here we are in the cockpit of the uh, A321-231. And uh, this cockpit is not my work. It was a variation of a panel originally created by Ken Mitchell. And uh, basically they swapped out the, the original CRT gauges for uh, LCD displays. On top of that, I've made some additional modifications. I've added AI radar to the uh, cockpit, uh, pushback and taxi gauge as I as well as a ground proximity warning system. I've also included my own uh, 2D cockpit views. These are my own work. I created these myself from uh, photos. And uh, they are exactly as you would see in an A321. We also have a view of the cabin. We have some wing views. This one looking at the right forward wing and engine. This one looking over the right wing and after the right wing. Same views on the opposite side of the aircraft, of course. We also have this view looking at a seat in front of you with a uh, video display showing a pilot's eye view of the view ahead. Great when you're coming in for approach and landing, you can see exactly what the pilot is seeing. So that being said, as I stated, we have exactly 35,000 pounds of fuel loaded on the aircraft, give or take a few pounds, and uh, to fuel planner that's a calm that's just enough to get from where we are to uh, israel gonna go ahead and uh, get the system up and running here and uh, we'll get clearance from air traffic control for our flight plan today I'm not going to start the engines right away because uh, we're a little bit close to the terminal here, so uh, we're going to get uh, clearance from air traffic control first and get them back away from the uh, terminal first before I start the engines. Frankfurt clearance delivery, Lufthansa 239 are ready to copy IFR clearance to Ben Gurion. Lufthansa 239 is cleared to Ben Gurion, airport has filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 11000. Departure frequency is 120.8, squawk 7651. Taxi, hold short, runway 7, center, using taxiway, no 
November 7, Mike 2, November, November 1, 5, Lima, Lima 2, 1, Lufthansa 2, 3, 9 Hey, so we got the birds from air traffic control for our flight plan to, today, and uh, we got ground cl uh, clearance to taxi to the runway. I'm just set setting up my pushback gauge here. We're going to back up about uh, 15 seconds and then uh, make a 90 degree turn. Ground from cockpit. Go ahead. Ready for pushback. Okay, steering pin inserted. Release brakes. Brakes released. Okay, pushing back. All engines clear for startup. And as you can hear, we just got instructions from ground control that we can actually start up the engines now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can hear the engines are spooling up now, they're coming to life. Set parking brake. Parking brakes are set. Prepare for a taxi and signal on left side. Okay, going to the moon and hand signal on left side. I have a uh, third party scenery installed for Frankfurt Main International and uh, it's probably one of the best uh, third party sceneries I've ever installed. As far as freeware goes, anyway. Very uh, complex, a lot of detail, but easy on the frame rates as well. It's not something you get very often. My system today, uh, I'm using an AMD A10 clocked at uh, 3.8 gigahertz with a turbo frequency of 4.0 gigahertz. 16 gig of RAM and uh, using a NVIDIA GeForce 750Ti with two gigabyte of video memory. And that's all running on Windows 10. And uh, for those that aren't aware of it, there is a known issue with Windows 10 where uh, 3D gaming uh, will stutter occasionally. And uh, we do see that occasionally in Flight Sim 2004 uh, running on Windows 10. Not a big issue, but one they are aware of and they are expected to release a patch for it at some point. For those that didn't see my previous video, I flew the. Uh, same aircraft, the A321 from uh, Athens, Greece up to Frankfurt, Germany, testing fuel burn, make sure the uh, br aircraft is burning fuel at the proper rate. That particular aircraft did not have the sharklets on it, and uh, this one does, so we want to see the difference. Obviously, this one also has the newer livery on it than the other ones. Figured if we're going with sharklets, we might as well go with the newest paint scheme as well. And that being said, uh, this is also going to be a little bit of a longer flight than the previous one, so uh, give us a better indication of how good we are on uh, fuel burn rate. Given the uh, changes I made to the uh, flight dynamics of the aircraft, we want to make sure it's burning fuel at proper rate. The software I'm using to record a video today is a program called uh, Open Broadcasting Software, or OBS. And I uh, highly recommend it for not only recording 3D gaming, but if you're doing any kind of webcasts or anything like that, uh, can't be the software. You can do a lot of things with it. Great if you're into producing any kind of video. The aircraft model is put out by Project Airbus, and uh, they're probably uh, best in the uh, freeware department for creating uh, Airbus aircraft, particularly. And they do a fantastic job. 
to be perfectly honest with you, the original flight dynamics for this aircraft were pretty good. I'm just a bit of a stickler for detail, so I uh, want the numbers in the uh, flight dynamics to exactly match those so uh, published by Airbus. So I just messed around with them a little bit just to get them where they should be. Not any real significant changes. Probably the bit, two biggest changes were the thrust scaler to uh, allow the aircraft to remain stationary with the engines at idle. And the change to the uh, vertical speed on the autopilot to probably now to zero instead of, uh, I believe it was 1800 feet per minute. I could be corrected on that. The outside air temperature today is 29.85 inches of mercury. Of course, we use barometric pressure to measure altitude under 18,000 feet. I want to make sure that's set correctly. The A321, for those that don't know, is a very lazy climber. It's a little bit underpowered. And uh, the IAE engines, although they're a streamlined engine, more aerodynamic, they also uh, have a smaller air inlet. As a result, when you get above 20,000 feet, you're thinner up there, and uh, because of the smaller opening of the uh, front of the engine, you get less air going into the aircraft, less thrust going out the back end. As a result, once you get about 20,000 feet, the engines begin to struggle a little bit, depending on weather conditions, wind, etc., and how heavy your aircraft is at the time. You may have to uh, level off sometimes at somewhere around 26,000 feet and let the aircraft gain some airspeed before you climb back up to your cruising altitude. Coming up to the runway here, so I'm just going to turn off the taxi gauge. And we'll bring the aircraft to a stop. Frankfort Tower, lift on the 239er, ready to go. Runway 7, center, IFR to Bengarian. Lufthansa 239er, clear for takeoff. Runway 7, center. Clear for takeoff. Runway 7, center. Lufthansa 239er. One question I get quite frequently uh, from uh, newer uh, people coming into the flight sim community is uh, what is a proper flap setting for takeoff and uh, there's no right answer to that it, it, all based on a number of different factors for example you have to take into consideration how the weight of your aircraft the amount of fuel you have on board the length of the runway you're going to be taking off from uh, the winds uh, what direction the wind is blowing whether it's a headwind or a tailwind you also have to look at the outside air temperature. If it's warm, really warm out, uh, you don't get as much slip from the wings with the uh, higher temperatures. So a uh, number of different factors factor into that uh, choice. Today I'm going to be taking off uh, with flaps position two. which translates into, I believe it's 16 degrees collapse down. I'm doing that because uh, I'm at not quite maximum takeoff weight, but I'm a little on the heavy side. I'm going to be using the auto throttle for takeoff. I can get away with that because I have a very long runway ahead of me. For a shorter runway, i probably use full thrust.
I think you have to be careful with, with the A321. It's a very long aircraft and uh, you don't want to get the nose up too high or you could scrape the tail. We're airborne now, so I retract the landing gear and engage the autopilot. And retract the flaps. In case you haven't noticed, we now have the props uh, fully retracted. And our airspeed is up to 221 knots in the case of airspeed. Of course, there is an observed uh, speed limit below 10,000 feet. You have to keep your airspeed under 250 knots. That's the reason I have the autopilot set to 240. at a relatively modest rate of uh, 1,500 feet per minute, and uh, I'm going to continue that rate until we get about 10,000 feet. Once I uh, get some airspeed build up, I'll try to increase vertical climb, but that being said, the A321 is not a very good climber, and uh, the most you can expect out of an A321 is 1,800 feet, and uh, once you get up Around 27,000 feet, and it starts to uh, lose airspeed, and you got to reduce that back down. Take a look at the aircraft from the outside. This is the uh, new livery from Alfonso. And it's the IAE equipped uh, A321. If uh, memory serves me correctly, I could be wrong on this, don't quote me. Uh, I believe most Alfonso planes use CFM 56 engines. This one is equipped with the IAE engines, something you don't see every day. The aircraft is maintaining a good uh, angle of attack as it climbs through uh, 7,000 feet on its way up to 11,000.
This is typical with uh, air traffic control. Uh, they're not very down all the time, so we're going to make a little course correction here just to get on our flight plan. One of the nice things about Flight Team 2004 is uh, air traffic control is not leaves a little bit to be desired. Frankfort Center, lift on the 239er is at 8,100, climbing 11,000. Lift on the 239er, Frankfort Center, roger, turn altimeter 29er, 860. A little bit about simulator, um, fine flight sim 2004 obviously, but it's a very modified version. I have Airport Environment Professional installed, as well as uh, Howard's Mix in Natural World which uh, basically is a full texture replacement. I also installed Ground Environment Professional 2, which uh, is responsible for both lo ground lighting as well as uh, different shades of clouds and uh, sky textures, sky colors and halos on the sun, etc. We also have some custom water textures installed, make those a little bit more realistic. For weather, I'm using Active Sky, and that's uh, downloading real-world weather off the internet. We're over 10,000 feet now, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the landing lights and uh, increase our uh, our speed here. Let's go to two three nine or climb and maintain flight level two five zero. We're climbing up to 25,000 feet at this point. I'm going to set that uh, auto throttle to 315 knots, which is a good uh, speed for climbing. Climb and maintain flight level 250. And you can see our uh, airspeed is increasing at this point. I'm going to increase our climb rate now to 1,800 feet per minute, which is probably as high as you'd ever get it on an A321. Unless you were very low on fuel. I have to give kudos to the uh, person who painted this aircraft. It's not something you see every day. It's uh, included a little bit of uh, dirt on the paint scheme. Usually uh, a lot of painters uh, paint aircraft uh, look, looking like they just committed a, the paint shop pristine and absolutely perfectly clean. Very rarely they ever look like that. Nice to see a little bit of uh, Dirt effects on the moon surfaces, could fall surfaces, etc. I'm through uh, 16,000 feet now, and uh, airspeed is holding steady at 306 knots indicated airspeed. Air outside uh, winds are pretty high, 253 degrees at 67 knots. We haven't noticed in the uh, multifunction display here, we're just about ready to uh, intercept our flight plan here. We made a course correction from 140 degrees to 150 degrees, and it's gradually bringing us closer to the uh, assigned flight plan. And air traffic control picked up on that, and we're now locked on to the flight plan. The aircraft will follow that flight plan now until uh, we arrive at our destination. World travel 1031, traffic at 11 o'clock, 3 miles at flight level 290, Boeing 737, report them in sight. Pacifica 2986, descend and maintain 9000. World Travel 1031, traffic in sight. Landmark 6545, have the traffic. It's climbing over 20,000 feet now, and this is where the uh, IAE engine uh, starts to lose a little bit of its efficiency. 
Now, today it might not be an issue because uh, we have pretty good winds outside and uh, it's a tailwind, so it's pushing us along. But uh, there are times when, uh, once you get over 20,000 feet, the aircraft will begin to lose airspeed. And by the time you get up to around 26,000 feet, sometimes you got to level off and gain some airspeed before you can continue your climb. Otherwise known as step climbing. Again, a little bit of turbulence here. We're passing through some upper level cloud cover here. Nothing significant, but just enough to pump the plane around a little bit. So we're on our final leg of our uh, climb to cruising altitude. I'm going to reduce our vertical speed back down to 1,500 feet per minute. Airspeed is starting to drop off a little bit there, and I don't want to get too low. Coming up on 28,000 feet now, which is our cruising altitude. I've reduced the climb rate to 1,000 feet per minute just to uh, maintain airspeed. And it should be leveling up very soon here. Now the altimeter set to 29.92 inches of mercury, which is the default for about 18,000 feet. Aircraft hit a little pocket of uh, air there, so we kind of bounced around a little bit, but okay there. Winds outside are very strong, 244 degrees at 92 knots. I'm going to switch over to Mach speed and we'll be cruising at Mach 0.78. Right now that we're at uh, cruising altitude and speed, we can turn off the passenger seatbelt sign. And we're on, we're on the way to Tel Aviv, Israel. Our ETA for Israel was uh, three hours and ten minutes, give or take. Obviously, I'm not going to record the entire flight. That's going to be a very long video. So we'll pick it up with you when we get a little bit closer to our destination. Hi folks and welcome back to my video, uh, currently en route to uh, Ben Gurion International Airport in Tel Aviv, Israel. We're currently 123 nautical miles from uh, the airport over uh, the eastern Mediterranean Sea, south of Cyprus. Flying at 32,000 feet, Mach 0 0.80. And I'm going to reduce our altitude at this point down to 28,000 feet. Uh, we climbed higher earlier. Uh, once we burned off a little bit of fuel to uh, save some fuel. And in preparation for landing, we're going to descend back down to 28,000 feet. Left contact 239, request flight level 280. Left contact 239, descend and maintain flight level 280. And this is a very shallow descent, uh, 1,000 feet per minute. Uh, it's not a assigned 
altitude by air traffic control. It's just a request and that we didn't resolve. One thing I should mention, uh, I don't normally do this, but in this case, uh, being a long flight, three hours and 15 minutes from uh, Frankfurt to uh, Israel, I saved the flight mid-flight and uh, come back to it, but uh, in the interim, I, I did make a couple of modifications to the cockpit, and uh, you'll see here there's a new uh, gauge for the flaps as well as an angle of attack gauge, and uh, an angle of attack gauge particularly comes in handy when you're coming in for landing at uh, Gives you a good indication when you should uh, increase your props. Making sure the nose is not getting too high. Currently 110 nautical miles from Ben Gurion Airport and we have uh, just over 8,600 8, pounds of fuel remaining. And if we have the fuel calculated correctly, we should get a little fuel warning just uh, prior to or just after landing. Looking at the lower ICAST screen here, you can see all the tanks are empty except for the center one, and that's that one's the one that has the uh, remaining fuel left in it. So, uh, given that we only have one tank with uh, fuel in it, we're going to turn off the uh, heaters to the main tanks and just go with the center tank. Currently 97 nautical miles from Ben Gurion. I'm just going to zoom in on the uh, multiple function display here to see our approach plan. No doubt we'll probably deviate from that uh, flight plan once we get within uh, range of the airport begin our final descent to landing. We're coming up on 28,000 feet now, Mach point seven eight. Nicosia Center, orbit 907, one, is at flight level 2, 5, 8, climbing flight level 2, 6, 0, orbit 907, 0, 1, Nicosia Center, roger. You might have mentioned in the uh, first part of the video, uh, the A321, when you're descending it, doesn't bleed up uh, airspeed very well compared to, let's say, a Boeing 737. As a result, you have to keep a very close eye on your uh, airspeed when you're descending. Typically, you don't want to exceed uh, 1,500 feet per minute descent rate. Any more than that, and you risk overspeeding the aircraft. A little slightly different uh, technique when you're descending with an Airbus versus a Boeing. Boeings uh, tend to bleed up airspeed very well. The, Air the Airbus aircraft uh, don't like to bleed off airspeed. Have to watch that. World Travel Four Zero Nine or Three is climbing through flight level one eight two four. Flight level two four zero. World Travel Four Zero Nine or Three. Ecosia Center. Roger. Lufthansa two three nine or descend and maintain flight level one nine or zero. Okay, so we got our. Uh Initial descent to 19,000 feet in preparation for landing. I've turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. Descend and maintain flight level 190. Lift on to 239. And gradually increasing our descent rate to 1,500 feet per minute. And we'll switch over to indicated airspeed here and drop our uh, airspeed down to 230 knots, which should bring the engines down to idle speed. Currently 76 nautical miles from Ben Gurion Airport, and we're on descent to landing at this point. Lufthansa 2, 3, 9, or Pewart 7, 3 miles northwest, turn left heading 1, 2, 0, expect vectors ILF, runway 3, 0, approach Cessna 1, 7, 6, Pewart 1, 0, 1 miles northwest, turn left heading 1, 1, 0, climb and maintain 1, 3,000, expect vectors ILF, runway 3, 0, approach Turn left, heading 120. Expect vectors ILS. Runway 30. Approach. Lift contact 239er. 
turn left, heading 110, climb and maintain 13000. Expect vectors ILS, runway 30, approach Cessna 176. Hey, so we just been given our uh, approach uh, instructions and uh, looks like we're going to be coming in north of uh, Ben Gurion and we'll be flying west of the airport and then uh, circling to land on runway 30. And that course will take us over uh, northern part of Israel near uh, Herzliya you can see there's a little bit of uh, cloud cover coming into view there, reflecting off the uh, orange sky from sunset. Left contact two three nine. Contact Tel Aviv Center on one two one point four. One two one point four. Left contact two three nine. Tel Aviv Center. Left contact two three nine. Is at flight level two zero six. Descending flight level. One thing I should note about the uh, angle of attack gauge I've added here, uh, the Airbus A321 naturally flies with a slightly nose-up attitude. So it's not unusual for the nose to be a little bit higher than what you would see in, say, a Boeing 747. That being said, when that uh, angle of attack gets up around five, five or six degrees, uh, you know you're flying with too high of an angle of attack and you need to apply flaps at that point or speed up one or the other. Approaching our assigned altitude of 19,000 feet. We'll be leveling out here and awaiting for the instructions from air traffic control. Because we're leveling out here, I'm increasing my airspeed just a little bit. And we've just been told to de descend to 13,000. Just when you thought it was safe. Descend and maintain 13,000. Lift contact 239. Backing off on the airspeed again just to keep the aircraft under control. Again, the uh, Airbus A321 has a tendency to get away from you if you're not careful descending you can uh, easily end up in an overspeed situation keep in mind we have a speed limit under 10,000 feet of 250 knots indicated airspeed we want to be under that before we get to 10,000 feet obviously we're under 18,000 feet now so I'm going to set the barometric pressure to 29.81 inches of mercury of course, for those that don't know, we use uh, barometric pressure to measure altitude under 18,000 feet. When you're flying above 18,000 feet, we use a standard 29.92 inches of mercury for all aircraft. And it keeps everybody on the same page. One thing I should mention here is, uh, although I've tried to match the public specifications from Airbus as close as I possibly can, it is a flight simulator, and as a result, it's not uh, ever going to be exactly like the air actual aircraft. That's just not possible. There are a little bit uh, of anomalies with uh, Flight Sim 2004 that we have to account for. As a result, not every landing is exactly 100% perfect, and it shouldn't be expected to be so. Anybody expecting to land in the center line of a runway every single time you do it, is, in my view at least, uh, living in a pipe dream. In a flight simulator, uh, 
like Flight Sim 2004 or Flight Sim X for that matter, if you can get the aircraft on the runway with none of the wheels going off pavement, and you touch down with a good angle of attack, not a hard landing, you're able to bring the aircraft to a stop and exit on a taxiway, you pretty much achieved a good landing. A lot of people fixate themselves with uh, landing directly on the center line and uh, in the real world that seldom if ever happens. You're always either a little bit left or right of the center line. So anyone wishing to uh, it compared my video as being not exactly 100% perfect. I make no apologies for that because it is a simulator, it's not real life and even in real life when you're landing an aircraft on a runway it's very seldom you exactly hit the center line of the runway. Looking at the multifunction display here, you can see the uh, ILS system has become active. It's obviously uh, nowhere near being ready to be used. It's uh, too high for the glide scope and well north of uh, the runway, so just picking up the signal at this point. A little bit of cloud cover over Israel today as we approach. Local time in Israel is uh, 7.30 local time. Trying to convert that into AM, PM. Seven thirty-two. So our next assigned altitude is 4,800 feet, and we'll do that at 1,500 feet per minute, as is usual. Lights below from Tel Aviv, courtesy of uh, Ground Environment Professional 2. Lufthansa 239er, contact and Gorian's approach on 119.5. 119.5 for Lufthansa 239er. And Gorian approach, Lufthansa 239er, is at 10,900 for 4,800. Lufthansa 239er. Keeping on my airspeed there, it's creeping up a little bit. We'll be watching that closely. Just going to apply just a little bit of uh, spoiler just to bring that airspeed back down. hard to see there in the dark, but uh, you can see the uh, spoilers are deployed a little bit there just to uh, create a bit of a drag, help slow the aircraft down, keeping us under 250 knots. Turn on our landing lights here.
I'm going to give you a view of the exterior of the aircraft with the landing lights on. And you can see the uh, landing lights do a nice job of reflecting off the wings. Very nice job of uh, repainting this aircraft. I'm quite impressed with this paint job. Orbit Niner 068, contact in Gordian's departure on 119.5. 119.5, Orbit Niner 068. I've set the barometric pressure to 29.74 inches of mercury. You can see the engines and uh, leading edge of the wing there are lit up from the landing lights. Contact in Gordian's approach on 119.5. 119.5. Lift on the two three niner. Then Garian approach. Lift on the two three niner. Is at six thousand five hundred. Descending four thousand eight hundred. Orbit niner zero six eight. Turn by heading one two five. Lift on the two three niner. Then Garian approach. Roger. Altimeter two niner seven four. Turn right, heading 125, orbit niner 068. One thing I was quite impressed with with this uh repaint, a relatively new repaint just released. And uh, the author has included both uh, textures for the uh, chocolate variant as well as the non-chocolate variant, and uh, you don't see that every day. Contact the mom center on 128.5. 128.5, orbit niner zero Loving out at 4,800 feet now. You hear the engine spooling up. And we're beginning our procedural turns here to line up with the runway. Turn right heading 180. Lift on the 239er. You can see the lights of uh, rural Israel just outside of Tel Aviv. 128.5. Lift on the 239er. Then Garion approach. Lift on the 239er with you. Lift on the 239er. Then Garion approach. Roger. Current altimeter 2975. Reducing my airspeed down to 220 knots here, and uh, hopefully that'll bring the aircraft under 230 knots. And by doing that, I can re release the uh, flaps by applying, I'm sorry, release the spoilers and apply flaps one. One thing I, know, I like about this new flaps gauge I've added is uh, it shows you both the leading edge and trailing edge of the flaps. Something the uh, original one doesn't do over here. And just so it's on record for those that uh, like to uh, point out every single detail. The uh, angles on these flaps are not meant to be accurate. Uh, I concentrated more on uh, proper lift and drag versus actual angle settings. So if you see the numbers don't look right here, they're probably not. 
when I was modifying the flight dynamics, I was more concerned with keeping a proper angle of attack and uh, proper stall speed and proper mental lift. Thing to keep in mind is the uh, flight dynamics I'm using are my own flight dynamics and they're a work in progress so uh, once I'm satisfied that the flaps are uh, working the way they should I can always go in and correct those angle settings so that they uh, display correctly. Currently about 20 nautical miles from Ben Gurion Airport. Skyline, one four miles northwest of New York, one four two request flight following Cessna November 6, 7, 6, 1, 6, Ben Gurion Departure, Squawk 716 Terrain, 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 Too Low, Terrain. You can hear the ground proximity. Terrain, Terrain, Too Low, Terrain. Terrain, terrain. Terrain, terrain. One thousand. Terrain, terrain. There's warnings from the ground proxy. Terrain, terrain. Terrain, terrain, terrain. Terrain in the area is a little bit rolling terrain, hills terrain. here, and uh, we're flying extremely Too low. Well. Terrain. 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 Too low. Terrain. 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 Too low. Terrain. 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 Too low. Terrain. 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 Too low. Terrain. 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 Having landed in terrain, the airport, terrain. Uh, before, too low terrain. I'm used to this. Terrain, terrain. Too low terrain, terrain, terrain. Because of the uh, low approach here, uh, uh, terrain, 20, terrain. Feet. Terrain, terrain. The uh, IRS terrain, is terrain. Too low terrain. And you don't pick up a proper signal. Terrain, terrain. Too low terrain. Terrain, terrain. Probably perhaps one plus F now, and that should quiet the uh, ground proximity warning system a little bit. One thousand. And again, uh, when you're coming into uh, Ben Gurion, uh, because of, I'm coming in such a low altitude, 2,200 feet, and the uh, terrain is rolling hills, the uh, ILS system gets a little landlocked, so you don't always uh, get an accurate reading until you're right up on top of it. One of the uh, little anomalies flying Flight Sim 2004. Reducing the airspeed a little bit here. Lufthansa 239 cleared to land, runway 30. Cleared to land, runway 30. Lufthansa 239. So at this point, I've decided I'm going to make a manual landing here. It looks like the ILS is not going to kick on her. So uh, again, one of the joys of uh, flying a simulator, they're not 100% perfect. But we can uh, 
to a manual landing. It's not too late for that. Sink rate. I'm coming Sink a rate. Steep here, just to uh, Sink get rate. some altitude. One Sink thousand. rate. Up. Playing a little bit of spoilers to help me uh, Sink slow rate. down. Sink rate. Too low. Laps. 500. 400. At this rate, it looks like we're going to abort this landing. I I'm not happy with it. Retracting the landing gear and retracting the flaps. We're going to go around for another approach. And Gary and Tower, this contact 239 is going missed. Well, knowing runway 30 is not working this evening, we're going to try another runway here. See here, we're negotiating with air traffic control for a different runway. I'm not happy with the one we were given. Runway 26 being a little bit longer and. Uh,
We'll try for runway 26. Turn right heading 0 9 -er, 0 Lift contact 2 3 9 -er. Hopefully runway 26 one, works a little bit better one, than runway seven, 3, dude. I've set the uh, nav radio for that uh, runway. Small correction there. 108.7 megahertz. As you can see, there's a lot of... Uh, Activity going on in the cockpit at this point. Turn left, heading 065. Lift contact 239. -er. And this is a good example why we uh, we always load a little bit more fuel than what we need for the trip in case something like this occurs. Currently level at 4,100 feet. Flying northeast. We'll be making a uh, 180 degree turn here at some point to lay down for runway 26. Adjusting the altimeter to 29.79 inches of mercury. You have to keep an eye on that when you're flying under uh, 18,000 feet. It changes regularly. Set the props at position one here and then I'll uh, Reduce our uh, trust level. Conserve a little bit of fuel. flying northeast away from uh, Ben Gurion and uh, we'll be making a 180 degree turn here shortly. Uh, turn right heading 140. And as you can see that's just taking place. And then we have a low fuel light coming on, which uh, was pretty much expected. It indicates that our fuel burn rate is pretty much smacked up right where we want it to be. I'm going to turn that off just so it's not distracting me. We're in no danger. I still have uh, 4,600 pounds of fuel remaining, and we're lining up for final approach. So. 
Nothing to worry about. Lufthansa 239er, contact in Gordian's approach on 119er.5. Going to 119er.5, Lufthansa 239er. Heading of uh, 170 once we complete this turn, and that'll put us uh, basically 90 degrees to the runway. So we'll be making another hard right hand turn to line up for, run for landing. So we're on an intercept course for the uh, localizer ILS approach on my 26, and uh, this is going to give us a bit of a crosswind. Uh, ideally, we would have liked to have come in on uh, runway 300, or I think runway 30. That uh, didn't work out so well, so we're going to try uh, runway 26. As you can see, we got a better uh, signal from the IRS on this runway to have no trouble rocking onto it. I've lowered the landing gear and increasing flaps. Airspeed at 205 knots. you've narrated one of these videos while flying a, an airliner, it's not easy to always acknowledge aircraft control and explain what you're doing at the same time. Gonna lock on the uh, ILS system now and uh, Glyscope is active. I'm reducing the airspeed on the autopilot to under 150 knots.
One thing you'll notice with um, me when I'm coming in for a landing, and uh, there's no right or wrong on this personal preference. Some people like to rely on the uh, autopilot uh, all the way down to the ground. Personally, I like to disengage the autopilot just ahead of uh, touchdown and make any minor course corrections there. Nothing wrong with that if, if you're good at it. And again, there's no right or wrong, it's just a matter of personal preference. Whatever you're most comfortable with. Personally, I don't like to rely on technology too much. Most of my landings, uh, at least the last 200 feet, are uh, done manually. Increasing flaps now, the, uh, you can see on the angle of attack, we're up to six degrees. Going over the flaps here and that'll bring my nose back down. I'm going to earn the spoilers to automatically deploy upon touchdown. The aircraft is equipped with uh, auto brake, but uh, we're landing on a relatively long runway here, so we don't need to worry about that. Clear to land, runway 26, lift on to 239er. This runway is a little over 13,000 feet long, so uh, more than enough to bring an A321 to a stop. Especially considering you're very light on fuel right now. 1,000. Now, if you look at the ILS system, and if you want to pick this apart a little bit, we're coming in a little bit uh, left of the runway, the runway being over to the right a little bit. Some people would uh, try to correct that at this point. Uh, I tend to wait until I'm a little bit lower down to do that, because sometimes the winds will shift at lower altitudes, and you could end up uh, lining up perfectly, so... One of the reasons I don't make course corrections until I'm a little closer to the runway. Sometimes you can have a sudden wind shift at lower altitudes, uh, very close to the ground, and uh, any course corrections you make at this altitude would be undone. A lot of amateurs that uh, I've never flown in a commercial airliner, would uh, make that mistake to try to make the corrections too early and run into a crosswind at lower altitude and you end up uh, missing the runway entirely. 300. Minimums. Reducing the engine to 50, idle. And 40, lifting the nose. 30, 20. Don't sink. 20. 10. Main gear touchdown. Nose wheel is down. Spoilers are deployed. Bottom reverse thrust. Here we go. A little bit of a crosswind there. It took the aircraft a little bit after I got on the ground, but. It was to be expected, we did come in on a different runway than we were supposed to, so didn't have a direct headwind. 
I'm off the end of the runway now, so I'm going to turn off my landing lights. Notice my landings are always done with the uh, cockpit in full view. Uh, that's the way it's done in the actual aircraft, so no reason to do it any differently here. You don't have the option in the fleet, in the uh, actual aircraft, of making the uh, panel disappear. So uh, that's the way it is in the actual aircraft. That's the way I'm going to do it here. This aircraft being a work in progress, I'm constantly tweaking and adding to it. Eventually, it's going to have a uh, a functional HUD or heads-up display, but uh, we're not at that point yet. That being said, the HUD will be in the uh, windscreen and not taking up the whole screen. I'm just going to engage the taxi gauge here so I don't have to constantly adjust the uh, throttles. We track the props at this point. You can see those flaps coming up. I don't want to bring up as I'm taxiing to the terminal here is anybody that's ever flown on a commercial airliner as a passenger will know that uh, not all landings are the same. Some of them are a little bit harder than others and uh, some of them you barely know you hit the ground. So uh, when you're looking at a landing and it's not exactly textbook. You can't really say it's uh, not a good landing. It's just uh, conditions at the time that you may not be aware of. It might not have been mentioned in the video that you're watching are occurring. And the uh, person making the video doesn't have the time to narrate it. 
Well, unless you know all the factors involved in a landing, sometimes you get a sudden burst of crosswind uh, on the last leg of a uh, touchdown, just before a touchdown, and you had to make some course corrections that you didn't anticipate. So unless you know the whole story, you really don't want to make uh, assumptions. Every landing is different, and no such thing as a perfect one. Coming up to our terminal here, so I'm going to turn off the taxi gauge. I'm going to put up the exterior view here just so you can see the aircraft pulling into the terminal. Parked at the uh, ramp. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn up the Calling engines on, and November, secure five, the two, aircraft. One, seven, six, request taxi to Northeast Parking. Cessna November 52176, taxi to General Aviation Parking. Via taxiway, Yanking Echo, November. Taxi to General Aviation Parking via taxiway, Yanking Echo, November. Cessna November 52176. And there you have it, the uh, aircraft is cold and dark, parked at Ben-Gurion International Airport in Tel Aviv, Israel. Airbus A321-231. Currently disembarking at the gate. If you have any questions for me, feel free to comment. I'll try to answer any questions you might have. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to find it for you. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good day.